whatever project you're doing always seems to be a bit of mission creep um, but sometimes you set off with lots of things you're going to cover and you find things along the way now with this I'm doing a, a refresh to make it a rider but one of the things I want to do is change the lock set um, I noticed it's not an original lock anyway but I've got three different keys one for the ignition one for the fuel tank one for the back thing uh, and I want to end up with one key for the lock so I bought one of those Chinese lock sets you know, they have a poor reputation with some people and other people say they're fine I'll see how I go on. I think that the ignition that's on it is actually one of the Chinese ones, so you know I'm not going to be any worse off really. Um, in doing that, I've noticed there's some tatty wiring. It's got, you know, electrical insulation tape around a lot of it. It's had some repairs in it, which I'm not quite certain about, and I want to have a look and just check them out. I'm probably not going to take all the old insulation off, but I'm going to take enough off so that I can see what I need to see and then tidy it up so it looks okay. Um, perhaps you know clean up a few of the connectors as well because they get corrosion so in this video it's do the lock set tidy up the wiring hopefully it doesn't creep to anywhere else issue I've come across with the uh, Chinese ignition lock is the wires that did have a connector for those two a different color scheme to the ones that are actually on the bike now, the wire colours that are on the bike for the existing ignition switch are the correct ones. Yeah, it has a red one that goes towards the uh, starter and ignition um, to make the bike run. And then the other one switches the fuse box. It, it comes from the fuse box. When you turn it on, it actually lets power go back to the fuse box, which turns everything else on. So, basically, once the switch is in the on position, all of these give continuity across each other. That means there's not like an earth coming in and an earth going out. It doesn't really matter which way round they are, although it is best to have the uh, positive side on the side of the switch that is open, but really doesn't matter. Now what I've done is I've checked continuity across these with the ignition switch turned on, and it's the same. So what I intend to do is I'm going to match the red and the black up anyway. The blue and the yellow I'm going to match to the blue and the orange. And the black one, as much as it makes me, you know, not want it, I'm actually going to connect to the red. And I think if I do it that way, this switch will work exactly the same as the old switch. So... That's how I'm going to do it. I'm just going to snip these off and I'm going to use the same block connector. It's not ideal, but hey, it works. That's the wires connected up, I'll not uh, cover them over yet. Let's see if they work. That looks good. And let's have a quick go. Obviously there's no fuel in it at the moment. Right, that seems to be fine. Now these do have security bolts on. As it's been replaced before, I already know it's got some two torque screws, so I should be able to undo them and swap that switch into it. Make sure that the lock works, actually that locks the steering, and then it should be good to go.
The other thing I need to know is to make sure the steering lock works. So. Does it come off? Yep. And it works on that side as well. So that's the steering ignition key switch changed. All seems to work lovely. All I need to do now is wrap the wiring again. One of the things with the wiring, and you may remember this from the uh, brake switch video, was that there was this uh, blue wire that had been used to connect up the brake switch. It does the job, it connects to the right place in both ends. I assume the wire in between that's inside the loom covering uh, must be broken. So I'm just going to replace it. But what I want to do is camouflage it a bit. It's got nice big red connectors and blue wire. So what I'm going to do is replace it with a black wire and clear connectors so that way it won't actually be so obvious should be fairly easy to do it's got a spade female spade at one end and it's got a, a round bullet at the other but hey luckily i do have the right things so I'm not going to run it inside the uh, wiring loom, so I've made sure it's about the right length. Before I go to the effort of uh, actually making it look neat within the wiring that's there, let's just test it first. Yeah, that looks good. And that's the new wire in place. And I don't think you can really spot that amongst the rest of the wiring. There's a little bit of corrosion on the inside on some of the bolts. To do a proper job, I should take them all off, wire brush them, and in reality, should probably re uh, replate them. But they're not actually that bad. So all I'm going to do for now is I'm going to give them a quick wire brushing, give them a blow off, and I'm going to put some wax oil, but not the uh, yellow wax oil can. This is the stuff from Genolite. That way, it's not quite as visible but it gives a much better coating than say just spraying it with WD-40 and that'll certainly stop the corrosion getting any worse for you know the next few years because in reality I'm not going to use this during really bad weather so just a quick brush unfortunately the compressor's not on at the moment and then A 
<laughs> That'll dry and give it a coating that'll stop it from corroding further at the moment. It actually looks lovely, doesn't it? It was only after I put the uh, cowl back on that I noticed there were these two rubber mounting holes that didn't seem to have anything that stuck into them. So I thought I'd investigate a little bit further. Having taken the cowl back off, I spotted that there's two spaces here which I actually think should have something prodding out that goes into those mounting holes and obviously they've broken off. Now I took a quick look at some second handed lights on eBay and it would look like most of these seem to have this bit missing which seems surprising. I think what it might be is that the cowl moving about at all puts a lot of pressure onto the plastic here and they snap off and when someone takes the front cowl off they perhaps don't even notice because they might be long gone by then. So I'm going to see if I can do something that will stick into those holes to stop the uh, cowl moving around. I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do yet, but uh, I'll have a quick look at it, because this could be the cause, or part of the cause, of this uh, infamous squeak that I've been looking for. To secure the headlight a bit then, if you check out the price of headlights, um, they're actually quite expensive and you do see quite a few of them that have got this tab broke, these tabs broken off anyway. So what I've decided to do was actually to put a bolt through in the steady that holds the clocks on. So to sandwich it between two washers and then have a rubber washer and the bolt thread covered over so that that actually prods into where the broken hole is. There's loads of room in there because uh, they, they don't go anywhere near the headlight itself. So that when you put the headlights on, that prods in. Let me just show you how that would go. So, the intention is that should go like that so that two of them stuck in will hold the, head, uh, hold the headlight in place. It may not be perfect, but it's a lot better than nothing. So I'm going to put them onto the bike and then see how it works. I'll show you how that looks. So there they are. Um, what I need to do is hook those into the holes where the original ones snapped off. Now, I did weigh up that there was a little bit of a gap, so I don't think it's going to cause an issue with clearance. The uh, nut in the middle that holds them on. I'll, uh, let you see in a few minutes how I went on putting them on. They fit in okay. Not sure if uh, it perhaps the rubber washer that I've put in pushes it a little bit too far forward and I won't really be able to tell until I put the rest of the fairing on. Um, if it doesn't work out, you won't be seeing this video. If it does and the rest of the fairing goes, goes on okay, you will. So it's either a great repair or it's a waste of time. Before I start fastening in all of the wiring and positioning it and making it all nice, it's important to make sure everything still works. It took a bit of a fiddle connecting it all together. Headlights working, main beam as well, the spotting lights working, indicators front and back, brakes still working, yep, and still working so it's together I'm gonna to tidy up all the wiring now then fasten on the brackets I've done the ignition lock I've previously changed the fuel cap um, it was something I did a while ago just because this one wasn't too groovy interesting thing was the screws that I got with the new one weren't long enough so I had to reuse the old ones if you come to change this, basically it's only 12 o'clock, 5 o'clock and 7 o'clock 
the other ones just hold and uh, just for ornament really um, and it's quite simple to undo them pop it off clean it up pop the new one on The final bit for this is the luggage locker part. It was a little fiddly putting the lock on but went on okay in the end. I had to cut a new groove into the plastic as you can see. Once that was done, that's the job completed. If you've enjoyed this, please subscribe. Why not follow along with our other adventures with this bike and others. 